he's like the pastor's pastor. Uh, over 100 churches, that's a big, big job. Because, uh, you know, you think you go through stuff, guess what? Pastors go through a lot as well. And uh, this is a, a man that we can go to. So he just really don't talk. Uh, but anyway, uh, I would like you to welcome uh, our administrative bishop of the Church of God in Indiana, Brother Jeffrey Robbins. Amen. Amen. You know what Brother Dennis was just singing about, that pouring rain. We need it. Amen. We need the pouring rain because as the world turns, desperate housewives and the bachelors Along with the Simpsons spend every 24 lost in South Park as special victims in the great anatomy of the days of their lives. <laughs> they are wanting to live the sweet life in the homeland, but instead find themselves in a shark tank. Mm -hmm. Coping with their fear factors through storage wars and sex in the city. <laughs> Trying to deal or no deal their ways to the lifestyles of the rich and famous and hopefully have a duck dynasty. <laughs> They'll use any alias they need in order to be the survivor, not be chopped in an amazing race, to walk the runway and dance with the stars, right, right. and hopefully be named an American Idol. <laughs> what you're looking for is an extreme maple. <coughs> you see, they think the price is right for a closer who will be an iron chef and, like the wizard from Waverly Place, whip up a recipe for peace at their house. But this extreme makeover that they're looking for is something that Oprah won't talk about. Just Judy can't remand, CSI can't uncover, and Dr. Phil won't prescribe. <laughs> Isaiah talked about an extreme makeover, and that's what I want to talk to you about in a few moments. But he talked about it 2,500 years ago when he said, I saw the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temples. Can I tell you, if you're going to see the Lord, if we're going to see the Lord, we have to let something die out. That's right. You see, Isaiah was a great prophet, but he had connected his political ambitions to King Isaiah because King Isaiah was a great man. He was a great diplomat. He was a great leader. And Isaiah felt like if he would just hang on to him, everything's going to be all right. And in that year, Isaiah said, it was the year that my idol died, the year that my mentor died, the year that my, the, the, my man died, I saw the Lord. Can I tell you, I want to see. Yes. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train filled the temple above, and so the servants, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, with twain he did fly, and one cried unto another and said, Holy, hallelujah. Brother Joy, just let it while we go. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The door of the post moved to the voice of him who cried, and the whole house was filled with smoke. Oh, God, I, I feel that smoke in here today. Don't you? That presence of the Lord. The whole house was filled with smoke. And then Isaiah said, Woe is me, because I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes, Brother Joe, have seen the King. Oh, hallelujah. He is high and lifted up. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can we just give him one more applause? We turned him on the grace of the grave. We give him glory and honor and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Blessings to the Lord. What a joy it is to be here in abundant love this morning. This is uh, Carl and mine and our family, our first time here. Been in the church several times, but... Appreciate the opportunity to be here, Pastor uh, Con. We just just love the congregation and uh, to feel uh, the abundant love that's here in this place. Amen. And I tell you, Amen. There, Amen. there's people around here that need to know about this church. Yes. I mean, you know, the old saying said, "There's no church like my church around my church, so my church must be the church." <laughs> and uh, there, that's a there's a good feeling in this place, and that's not a man-made feeling. That's a that's a God thing. Yeah. It's the Spirit of the Lord that is here, and uh, I appreciate this uh, this wonderful song service. You know, I tell you, Pastor, I just keep finding reasons to be jealous of him. I have to go home and pray. <laughs> you know, he's tall. I've already wondered if I was going to be able to see behind this leg. <laughs> I don't know if I look just like a little head up there. Or so, you know, he's got this height, and uh, you know, he's got this swagger to him, and, and a handsome guy. You know, I tell you this. And now, if that's not all, he can sing and dance. <laughs> I know you love him. And I know you love him. Amen. Amen. You're an incredible family. They do have an incredible family. 
Yes. You know, even though Brother Connor and I have not had an opportunity to spend a lot of time together, you know we begin to know a family and a man and a wife by their by the family, by what they mean, what they stand for, and uh, knowing that their sons and their daughters in law are all serving God and uh, loving Him, I tell you that says a lot. I tell you if I can if, if when I get old <laughs> I say I'm not old yet, and I get old <laughs> my children love God and please God, everything else will be secondary. Yes. Yes. That's what we're striving for, love Him yes. and live Him. You know, we, we have a lot to be thankful for. And I'm thankful for our relationship that we have with each of you. And I thank God for the, for the partnership. And I'll say more about that. Right now, my wife Carla is going to come sing in uh, oh, wow. the spirit of music. And I tell you, uh, my wife is a vocalist and a singer, but uh, we we know in who we believe. Amen? Amen. I ask to sing this song that she, she may say a word on her heart. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, y'all really don't need me to sing, but uh, it's hard for my husband to preach without me singing. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. But he always likes for me to sing. But I tell you, I have been just thoroughly blessed of the Lord this morning with your worship. Uh, I would recommend to all of you that you change the name of your church to Joy in the Camp. Because that is exactly what I felt when I walked in the door back there. Immediately, I knew I was going to enjoy today because there was such a joyful uh, spirit, not only among those that were positioned to greet, but just in the sanctuary. You could just feel a joyfulness. And you should not take that for granted. You, that's not everywhere. And uh, it should be, but it's not. And uh, you are very, very blessed. And what a joy I have felt today in the presence of the Lord. The music, honestly, I, I, I tell you, some of you guitar flippers, pickers, pluggers, y'all are good. Uh, but just very, very, very blessed. Um, I'm going to sing a song that I sing just about everywhere we go at least once. It's a song that a friend of mine wrote down in Miami, Florida. And I just love this song. You know, I... I am not a person who lives in fear. I don't. I love every day. Every day that I have, I love the Lord. And my father taught me years ago that the Lord's will, you know, when you're at that age where you're trying to figure out what you're going to be, where you're going to go, who you're going to marry. And he told me, do you know what God's will is for your life? God's will is so simple. It is to wake up every day. And love him with all your heart and soul and strength. And to do whatever makes itself available in that day to please the Lord. And when you do that, you walk in the Lord's favor. And that is just a theology that is Bible-based. And I, I live that. I love everywhere we've ever lived. I, I've loved every church we've ever pastored. I really, truly have. Uh, and in this day and time, the enemy, I think, comes against people so many times uh, with fear of the future because of economics, because of terrorism, because of weather, because of sickness, because of all kinds of things. We can just get in, we can get a hole in our heart of fear. But I want to encourage you today not to live in fear. But we know in whom we believe. And we have a mighty God who is able to do abundantly above anything that we could even think or imagine. He is such a good God. And Matthew, you know, he asked his disciples, who are people saying that I am? And they said, well, some say, you know, you're a prophet. And some say you're a teacher. And he said, yeah, but who do you say that I am? And that's all that really matters. Who do you say that Jesus Christ is? It's going to be you and Jesus one day. Who do you say that he is? Worship with me as I say. Christ that stood on the hill 
मैं डाल 